June 3. Deuteronomy 7. Psalm 90. Isaiah 35. Revelation 5. Several complex themes intertwine in Deuteronomy chapter 7. Here I want to reflect on two of them. The first is the emphasis on election. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. Verse 6. Why so? Was it on the ground of some intrinsic superiority, some greater intelligence, some moral superiority, or some military prowess that the Lord made his choice? Not so. The Lord did not set his affection on you and choose you because you were more numerous than other peoples, for you were the fewest of all peoples, but it was because the Lord loved you and kept the oath he swore to your forefathers that he brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the land of slavery, from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Verses 7 and 8. Two observations. 1. In the Bible, God's utter sovereignty does not diminish human responsibility. Conversely, human beings are moral agents who choose, believe, obey, disbelieve, and disobey, and this fact does not make God's sovereignty finally contingent. That is clear from the way God's sovereignty manifests itself in this chapter, that is, in election, even while the chapter bristles with the responsibilities laid on the people. People who do not believe both truths, that God is sovereign and human beings are responsible, sooner or later introduce some intolerable wobbles into the structure of their faith. 2. Here God's love is selective. God chooses Israel because he sets his affection on them, and not for anything in themselves. The thought recurs elsewhere. For example, Malachi, chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. But this is not the only way that the Bible speaks of the love of God. For example, John chapter 3, verse 16. The second theme is the encouragement God gives his people not to fear the people they will have to fight as they take over the promised land. Chapter 7, verses 17 through 22. The reason is the Exodus. Any god that could produce the plagues, divide the Red Sea, and free his people from a regional superpower like Egypt is not the kind of god who is going to have trouble with a few pagan and immoral Canaanites. Fear is the opposite of faith. The Israelites are encouraged not to be afraid, not because they're stronger or better, but because they are the people of God, and God is unbeatable. These two themes, and several others, intertwine in this chapter. The God who chooses people is strong enough to accomplish all his purposes in them. The people chosen by God ought to respond not only with grateful obedience, but with unshakable trust.